Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Comedy Film Nerds, episode 354. Lot to talk about today. Boom. Some amazing uh, um, Academy Award nominations we're yep. going to be speaking about. Also, uh-huh. we're going to be talking about Trespass Against Us, Lion, the founder, Jackie, a lot of big action-packed show today. <laughs> Got, well, we've got Kapow. stunts. Oh, all right. We've got stunt <laughs> sequence. There's a car chase in this episode. Yeah, you're going to love it. It's going to be... With a twist ending. Twist. Oh, yeah. or will it? Yeah. We'll we don't see. know. who. Mm. One of us maybe is the criminal. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know where to go after that. This so, isn't uh, really good improv. We have a good uh, announcement. <laughs> Uh, we have a big uh, LA Podfest announcement yes. coming on uh, February fifteenth. We're making the big announcement, the dates, everything. Boom! Big announcement so that can already assuage your fears that we're not doing it again. Yeah, yeah don't so. worry, we're doing mm-hmm. it again. Yes, um, it'll be in the fall again. Mm-hmm. Hint, hint. Yeah. Was that an announcement? That was like the vaguest. I know. We're announcing that we're going to have Can an announcement. Yeah. We're going to over over hyping the hyping. It's and a, we're a, a different. Pre- we're, there, there'd be an announcement about a venue change. Mm-hmm. Where the, has the Podfest been? The last three years, it was at the Sofitel in Beverly Hills, and then oh. two years prior to that was in Santa and Monica. How many days did it go for? It went three days. It's always Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So Sweet. it'll be it'll be Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Nonstop again. podcast. Non. And how many do you guys do during that? See, I'm plugging you. I'm I like. Plugging, it. I'm plugging your almost <laughs> announcement that's gonna happen. Will you guys be there every day. Yeah, we're there every day. Mm-hmm. Um, we well, we do a comedy film nerds live, and then we're usually guests on a couple of shows. Nice. And there's a big stand up on Saturday night. We do the whole stand up show. Um, so Lots of panels, panels. We would love to have you there. Okay, I'll be there. Excellent. <laughs> I'll give you the dates when on February fifteenth. Un- <laughs> yeah, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and like, if you're around, because I know you were, you're not doing your podcast anymore. By no, the way, this is our I, guest, Marilyn Rice Cub. Have we said her name? Hey, no, no, we haven't. Hi, okay. Mary Lynn Rice Cub. Thanks for having me. It's been like a few years. It's been, it's been a while. Years. Yeah, yeah. So it's weird. great to have you back. Weird, guys. Yeah, I think... Uh, I feel like 24 was still on the air. Right. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> or people were still bugging you when the next one was going to be on the air. Uh, yeah, but Remember it's that? happening again so. because they're, it never really goes away, but mm. they're re-airing old episodes and they're launching the new one after the Star Wars. Oh. So now people oh. are like... I mean, excited again. I'm not, yeah. yeah, it's not I'm not complaining, but it's mm-hmm. people are like, oh, now, are you watching season five? Are you in the new series with the new lead? Absolutely not. Okay, <laughs> but you will get residual checks when they rerun yeah. the old ones. Hey, no, it's not that great. Oh yeah. shit, it's a different kind of residual. <laughs> Is it an alternative residual? <laughs> it's an alternative <laughs> residual. <laughs> Kind of it, it, it's no friends residual, <laughs> believe me. It's like, oh, mm. I just can go buy groceries. Oh, all right. Once a year. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't need to eat that often. No, Come on. But believe me, I'm well off. When I go to so, Ralph's, I just buy whatever oh, I want. Oh, shit. Yeah. It's still kind of like that. Ralph's so. Private Select. You get his <laughs> Ralph's Private Select. <laughs> Private select bacon, fresh squeezed OJ. Once a year, Ralph goes into his special. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be part of the club to get the private select. <laughs> yeah. It's like this. Pretty, there's deals. Off brand cola, private select. It's like, <laughs> blows the dust off of it. Ralph brings it out. Sometimes there is dust on those. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> All right, let's Private. get started. Oh, let's do let's it. Let's do it. But I think that's a great idea. We should definitely invite Mary Lynn to LA Podfest this year. Even if you're even if you're not doing your podcast as a guest or doing stand up on the stand up show. I'm still doing stand up, guys. Boom. I here's, know. Here's the Done. news. Hit. I've been I've been mm-hmm. we did I some shows together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I talk to you, you pump me up about uh do it yourself. Yes. I'm still clinging on to uh but but it but it's well, going away for look, me. If the, I was the, old, still, the old school system. If I was still getting checks from the old school system, I would be holding on to I it as well. You. you know, like I, I I'm not they just stopped hiring me, so I was sort of forced into this garage. <laughs> but like <laughs> That's one of the reasons. This is a refugee yeah. camp yes. of sorts. <laughs> um, it's the cuddliest refugee isn't camp. Isn't it adorable? <laughs> meow, meow, yeah, it meow, meow. Wanting to leave your house. That's why this is in my garage. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I have to drive. Yeah. Oh, this, this so is we, my favorite. I I, I want to be on here more. Uh, that means I have to go see more movies, which would be great. Yeah. I start going, doing that while my kid's in mm-hmm. school, and I drive here because it's close to my house. Yes. See? I'm That's deeper a, in the valley. The um, the parent movie viewing time is Friday at 11 when they're already at school. It's always just me and a bunch of other old people who wander into the wrong film. 
<laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. It's, Can it's, you it's, walk to films? No, no. Okay. I go to the gallery. Oh, sweet. But uh, let's talk about, I want to talk about this movie, Trespass Against Us. This is the first movie I saw right. over the weekend. I don't know and anything about this. Movie. Now, I was excited about this movie. This one is um, Brendan Gleeson and Michael Fassbender. It was they're kind of like, it felt like a winter's bone kind of um like almost like hillbilly criminals in the UK. You know, they live in the trailer oh, park. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, um, this movie was not that good. <laughs> so it had a couple Stay of really in the trailer problems. park. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this is one of those things where it it uh it had a very large logic flaw that kind of was bothering me throughout the entire film. Now, the biggest problem with this film is that these are like small time criminals who live in a trailer park, you know, they, you know, they piss off the police and they do, you know, occasional criminal jobs. And apparently Michael Fassbender is a master uh, race car driver who can always out, uh, outfox the police in a car. Um, they do a big job and apparently they break into this house that's, you know, it's got millions of dollars in the hall. So I'm thinking if these guys are such master criminals, why are they living in a trailer park? (laughs) Why are they in a hovel? Because, uh, or if they're not such master criminals, why can't the police catch them or pin anything on them? It's like, well, I've never been charged. You know, all this, like, well, why They're from not? the South? So, yeah. It, that it, accent yeah, was yeah, great. Yeah. I've never been charged, <laughs> been charged. any of your awful mentioned crimes. I believe I'm getting the vapors. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's so warm yeah. here in the UK. Yes. <laughs> So it, it's this weird movie that really just doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, but one of the things that I will say is that uh, Brendan Gleeson and Michael Fassbender, their performances are so good, it like elevates the material. Uh-huh. Like it's worth watching just for their performances. Like they really do the best with you know what they have to work with. The other thing too, it was it felt like a little bit like Attack the Block, where the dialect is so thick and so heavy, and even when you can occasionally understand the word, I'm like, I'm not really sure what that means, because it's slang. It's UK slang. Mm -hmm. So I had trouble following a couple of scenes. I'm like, I'm not sure what they're talking about. So is that Um, why in your head you just change it to Southern so you could understand? Yeah, it's like, (laughs) well, kiss my grits. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that was weird. That made made perfect sense to me. So, uh, no, that's why. So, but it, it like has these weird things like uh, okay, so he's a, they're master criminals, uh, but they live in a trailer park. But they're kids yet still they go to school, so they have a school they go to, and they get dropped off to school. And it was it was all these weird things kind of put together. I'm like, I don't know how much this was thought through. Like if you look at a movie like Winter's Bone, where that whole world was created with Jennifer Lawrence and you know these kind of hillbilly criminals mm-hmm. or whatever, but there was never like you know like the that. Dukes of Hazard scene where like the uh, state troopers are, are chasing him in the car and just can't catch him, you know. Like, but that had this movie had those scenes, so it like it kind of didn't really fit. So, yeah, I'll get so you, Duke boys. Du- <laughs> so, so there's an English the Dukes of Hazard go to uh, rural England, rural UK, <laughs> so, and speak in an unintelligible dialect and slang. <laughs> Um, so there was a lot. If I was his dick, boys, yeah. I'd be getting needy <laughs> there, Yeah, and that's kind of what it sounded like. You'll never get me lucky charms. <laughs> okay, that says a lot to be good in a film that sounds as bad as you're describing. Yes, it, you know? yes. So it was. Um, there, there were some definitely the brightest parts were the acting for sure. Okay, like and they, they, you know, Brendan. Well, those two Wilson, guys are great actors. They're so good, and together, like as a father and son. By the way, they also played a father and son in Assassin's Creed that no one saw. Oh. Um, hmm. So it's, you know, Weird. Adam Smith's first feature film, uh, I believe he was a TV director, and Alistair Sid- Sidon's, Sidon's first screenplay. So, you know, I'd be anxious to see um, what their next project would be together, but this one was kind of like a swing and a miss. But isn't this sort of acting. been the theme, and we'll get into some other movies, yes. obviously, that are, you know, the Oscar nominations came out mm-hmm. today, but like, Hasn't that sort of been the theme of this year is like there hasn't been that many super solid movies. There's been good performances. Yeah, it's weird. It's like a lot of these movies is like where you can find a couple really good solid things in them. But overall, they're not great films. Mm -hmm. So we've definitely been seeing a lot. It's kind of a weak Oscar year this year, for sure. Um, Except in the animation department. That's so racist of you to say. (laughs) I heard about Trespass Against Us. I heard that Dev Patel was really hot. 
You heard so correct. sexist of me. <laughs> just, yeah, I know. Wow. I heard Some, his package. It looks great. Wow. <laughs> you guys had your march, and now you're just going out and <laughs> sexualizing. That's what we do now. Yeah. <laughs> we talk about penis bulges <laughs> in pants. <laughs> oh, that felt like... <laughs> Shitty coming out of my mouth. Yeah, it was. It was it just, I, don't, I, I don't care for that had, at all. I had more problems with the axe, the voice you were, the character that did the. I was, that was, the my, normal was, out of my, was my normal voice. my normal voice. So, could you please yeah. step off equality? Well, you want some sweet now. tea? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, we're, are we back in we're Scotland? Back. We're back. Here we're back in Scotland. <laughs> we're. By the way, it says it's an Irish American film. Yes. So all right. Trying mm. to participate, guys. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Well, you're let's. Welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> so let's talk about you. You saw the movie Jackie, which um, you trying to include me. Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes, that's why you're oh, nice. here, Mary Lynn. Oh, nice. We don't. Um, this movie, when I first started watching it, I, within the first minute or two, mm-hmm. I thought this is going to be my favorite movie. Really, I loved it. I thought it looked different, mm-hmm. and to see her. Because at first, you know, I was like, why would I want to watch a movie about Jackie? And then when it started, I, I thought, oh, because you see her anger and right away it's it opens with the journalist at the doorway and they're into it. And she's defensive and she's loyal and wow. she's angry and he's combative with her. And then, you know, they're going to start doing flashbacks and, the, and it's this uh, antagonistic interview with Billy Crudup and her. And I thought, now you're talking, and the you know music's kind of odd and creepy, mm-hmm. uh, uh, um, exemplifying her. You know the heart wrenching. Right. It's, it's got these weird off uh, um, tone string mm-hmm. section type music. Now that you love it all the way through. No, and then uh-huh. uh, within the first, I was really with it for like probably fifteen twenty minutes, mm-hmm. and then I realized that I was being slowly assassinated. <laughs> My, my spirit. So, 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 so someone, so a, a, a bad screenwriter was on the grassy knoll and took out the, the dialogue? What, like, what was a part of it that was killing you? It never went anywhere. And mm. for the setup of showing all these colors of her and this behind the scenes, like, you know, she's telling him, yes, of course you can't print that. She's smoking through the whole thing saying, yeah, I don't smoke. And so you right. think, oh, this is cool because I'm getting the juicy backstory and I'm right. getting the story of this woman of like what's really going on and, and sort of uh, kind of a, it's brave to just take it, f- you know, from when he dies and like we're just going to watch what happens. And I'm like, I am down for this story. Right, because her way- whole, the majority of her adult life has been your husband was killed. Like right. that's her whole identity. And what a cool idea right. to, to sort of delve into that. Well, it never goes anywhere. It builds at the beginning mm. and then it just plateaus. And the whole movie is just her deciding to have this elaborate procession for him. And then they advise her not to. And it's sort of how she wants everything to be beautiful and how she's sort of a victim now because I mean, she's a very strong opinionated woman, but the whole um, tone of the movie is just, okay, my husband died and now no one can understand me. And all the shots are like just her alone, which at first is so interesting Mm -hmm. because you're like, we're going to get into her head, but it never goes anywhere. No one ever changes. The, the thing that it keeps going back to is the the interview. He just ends up leaving like, well, okay, I guess I'm going to write what you tell me to write and bye bye And it never oh, wow. builds into anything. And then it just sort of ends in the same place where it started. That so ex- it's this really sensitive, it's almost like a, just a one note character story, the whole thing. And it's frustrating because for all the effort and the beauty of like, recreating those scenes and going through the trouble to make it all period and make it really cool looking. Which is the only, the one Oscar nomination it got was costume design. Right. It's, it and it's get- almost like the, the approach of doing the flashbacks and stuff, which could have been really useful, just ended up uh, having it be the same uh. throughout. It was very bizarre. Because so I the- kept waiting for it to take off. And you and wanted... Then- and her performance was good, but her character... So was- her performance is great, but after a while... She's just in the same space. It's, and yes, it's an emotional, conflicted, angry. It's an awesome space, but you. But it's you, one note. It's one note. Oh, yeah. So this is a script. It's weird. Problem. I mean, her performance is not one note, but it's. Mm-hmm. But 
She, but the movie it, is. Within, yeah, the movie is. Right, okay. Wow. Because she's up for uh, Best Actress. Yeah. Natalie Portman, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, she does a great job. It's just frustrating. Mm, she, the Meryl story Street never goes anywhere. Yeah, <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> um, so that's a, that's a shame, because it really feels like this was like an opportunity to really show something interesting about, yeah. you know, not not just this sort of like a, a, a an, an untold story of, of something that mm-hmm. everyone knows overly well. What, was it also was length the problem? Was like since it didn't really go anywhere, did it feel just too long? I I kept having this where I'm hanging in there because uh-huh. it is it is rich and her performance is layered and so you're like oh now something's gonna turn. How's her accent? Bizarre. She's, yeah. <laughs> It's okay. It's not. It didn't take me out of the movie. It's real right. breathy. But I did mm-hmm. go back and watch a clip of mm-hmm. of the real thing, and I thought, oh, she she did her version of it. It's not right. really. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that's the Ken- really that's, tricky to do. Yeah, the Kennedy yeah. one is that you don't because it can be so sketch cartoonish so right. quickly. Just well, you know, for yeah, she, she I, doesn't do that right. to, to her credit. She does go really breathy, and it's it's. Another uh, running thing throughout the film, which I didn't remember, was she does a famous tour of the White House that mm. was on TV. So they make the footage look really far away and then and, and grainy, and she's just kind of presenting. And now this is where we had the Shakespeare mm. play, and I just want everything to be beautiful here in the White House. So it shows you what she did you know, to make it uh, that the the myth of Camelot, and there's some great ideas in it, like uh, you know, life is the story that you tell, and that right. this is going to live on. And she was very right. concerned with his legacy, and um, there's some really cool conversations with like she would she would have with the priest, which again she's almost antagonistic with everybody and playing the victim, and then she got into some conversations about God and why does God hate me and why would God do this to me and um, well, according to our notes, too, this is uh, it's a, a very American story, directed by a not Chilean a lot of diversity. director. Not a lot of Chile- diversity. Chilean director uh, Pablo Lorraine. Uh, it's his first American film, although still shot mostly in Paris. Oh, and uh, originally set to star Rachel Weitz and directed by Darren Aronofsky. And I'll say, so I'm uh, not yeah, sure what yes, that's right. There. And the one other thing that was frustrating about it is that it was so in her point of view, which I love right. that idea. Mm-hmm. But then t- by the end, I was longing for some more Somebody uh, else. politics and, and some right. more here's what the world thinks because mm-hmm. it was so much from her point of view that it sort of exhausted that. So you could have right. used some like, here's her talking to LBJ or Bobby Kennedy yeah, or whatever the politics. Yeah, everybody else was outside of her and uh. you never got what was really going on with LBJ. You mm-hmm. just They were from her point of view oh, they're taking over now, you know, and right. she would see them picking out the new colors for, you know, of the furniture and stuff. Uh, uh, wow. Yeah, well, that's frustrating. A, yeah, I guess that's why. So it got, um, I was, so it's two nominations. She got Best Actress nomination and Costume Design, which sounds like those were the two highlights of the movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so All right. Let's, let's talk, talk about a movie that you really... Um, well, let's talk know. about... Oh, go ahead. All right. Well, what do you want? To, I was going to do. You want to do the founder? You've- we can do the founder or line. Let's do founder since okay. we both saw that. Absolutely. Okay. The founder was a movie I really wanted to see. Um, I had actually read Fast Food Nation, which delved a little bit into the story between the McDonald's brothers and uh, Ray, Ray Kroc, Kroc who um, uh, Roy Kroc, Ray, Roy Kroc, Ray, Mr. Kroc. So. Yeah. <laughs> Ray Kroc. It's Ray yeah. Kroc. Yeah. Ray Kroc. And. Uh, um, I really wanted to see what Michael Keaton was going to bring to it. I, I was curious to see, like, um, especially there's some very funny people in this movie, and to see if there would be like kind of like a Nick Offerman, uh, a, yeah, mm-hmm. a, a, you know, kind of a sense of humor to this film. There is not a sense of humor to this <laughs> film at all. It is played completely straight. Uh, there's no irony to it. There's literally, it's it, what you're doing is you're watching a movie that feels like Cliff Notes of a book is pretty much what what you feel like you're watching and. Here's why um, Michael Keaton basically plays uh, a con artist. You know, he's a low-level con artist. He's trying to sell stuff. He's a salesman. So, he's a salesman. Uh, but he's a sales. He starts a sales. But really, All salesmen at his are heart, con he's artists. a con yes. artist. Uh, <laughs> That's what you're saying. Is, uh, a- a- and what you're watching in this film is his slow rise to success at the expense of pretty much everyone else. Mm-hmm. And when you have a movie like that, 
And I was thinking about it, I'm like, why, why isn't this movie resonating? Why isn't there something about this movie that's just off that makes me not interested in watching this? And the reason is, too, when you have a movie that has one destination to get to a predestined point, we know what happens. We know what's going to get there. So you can't have an interesting movie when it's a slow deterioration to a, pre- a predetermined point. So all you're doing is watching uh, Michael Keaton's character slowly fleece these guys until he becomes successful. And then that's pretty much the I story. I you were going to say because you didn't like him. Yeah. That's <laughs> well, part of it. Well, that, well, the, well, what happens is he's set up a little bit as like, oh, he's a guy who's down on his luck. He's a salesman. But, you know, as the movie progresses, he pretty much turns into almost like a sociopath as he uh, robs these guys of their business and, you know, his marriage deteriorates. And by the way, Laura Dern has literally nothing to do except for make disapproving faces at her husband. Nice. There's literally, that's all she has to it. do. Yeah. <laughs> So, That's why I got divorced. <laughs> yeah, so I was thinking about this movie. And I was like, where where did it go wrong? And what and I realized it focused on the wrong story. The the real story is the McDonald's brothers and what they built and how they slowly lost everything to a uh, a, a Charlotte and a and a con artist because it sets up this really dopey contrivance at the beginning when Ray Kroc meets them and he's like, I gotta take you to dinner. I want to know your story. I'm like, oh, okay. So, and then that's when they start telling the story at dinner and we do flashbacks and stuff. But I'm looking at this story and this is far more interesting than watching Mm. a guy steal a business for two hours because they do stuff like they, you know, they start a stand, it's successful and then they have to move it and it won't fit under an underpass. So they're sawing it in half and moving it that way. It's so interesting to see their rise and fall and ultimately fall. I'm like, that's the story that would have been far, a far more interesting and compelling film. And you have Ray Kroc is essentially the villain that ultimately wins at the end. So you have this up and down roller coaster to see their successes and failure other than just a slow steady decline well that's interesting i think i liked it a little more than you did i wasn't Mm -hmm. like blown away by it um it it is very a little bit by the numbers historical movie john lee hancock is the director he did saving uh mr banks the blind side the alamo the rookie so he's literally done almost all (laughs) you know true stories um I guess to me, uh, I liked it a little more, maybe just because I like the sort of Michael Keaton resurgence, um, you know, Spotlight, sure. Birdman. Mm. Um, so and it, those movies, he had a lot more to do and a lot more interesting things to do with the character. Yeah, I think. He's really mad at you right now. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are fighting. Michael by the way. Keaton. Michael Keaton's mad. <laughs> no, you're. Oh, mad I mean, at Graham. yeah. And is, Michael Keaton. This is how we fight. Yeah. Also mad at you. Michael Keaton's mad at you. Michael Keaton's very mad at Chris. Um, I don't know. I guess I just like watching these uh, two weaklings uh, lose a fight. No. I, <laughs> <laughs> I guess it was sort of interesting. Like I, I agree when they did tell that story and that was a really interesting part of the movie because they showed actual black and white sh- like uh, photos right. of the, of the actual original McDonald's in San Bernardino and, and how they figured out the assembly line way of doing fast food. It was mm-hmm. all amazing. It was all really cool, but um, it was interesting. I, I felt like Michael Keaton had a little bit more of an arc in the sense that he did start out as this guy who's trying to sell milkshakes machines and he's like oh so you didn't mind it being about him and that story no i i i I, I didn't i think i think it was that was interesting enough to me just because um i knew a little bit about ray Kroc. um i heard you know the famous speech he gave um i can't remember what it was like the harvard business school or something and it was all these young business kids and he was like what business and i'm in they're all like oh hamburgers food and money goes no real estate and so I knew that was sort of his story of how right. he built that empire was he bought the real estate under of, under the franchises. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh. And so seeing how he got to that place and um, how the, the McDonald's brothers kind of – he was like he asked for a raise and a better deal. And they're like, nope, nope, nope. And they're too – they won't let go of their baby in, in essence and how he had to get past that and – the flaws of kind of who he was. Um, so I found it a little more interesting. Hmm. Uh, and maybe I just, I just really like Michael Keaton. You don't think that all salesmen are charlatans like Chris? 
uh, well, Chris hates America. He hates right. capitalism. <laughs> right. um, he's he's got to better get with the program. Yeah, he's a socialist. Things are um, <laughs> different now. We're ca- me and you are capitalists, yeah. right? You got that right, brother. We're recording this, right? Uh, make All podcast right. great again. I'll move to Canada. <laughs> you can go up there with the rest of your goddamn yeah. free healthcare yeah. hippie buddies. Um, no, I just thought it was interesting in that sort of old style of business of just like beat the competitor, you know, like yeah. cocktails and, and crush them, you know, <laughs> just so yeah. Robert Siegel screenwriter for the onion movie and the wrestler wrote this movie. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's, it's, it's I think it's okay, but it was not funny. At yeah, all. No, it was. <laughs> <laughs> not funny. And it, it was, uh, what I would have liked to have seen. And I was looking at the notes too. the Coen brothers wanted to direct it, but mm. were tied up with Hale Caesar. I would have loved to have seen the Coen brothers direct this film. I agree. I think they could have done a far better job. This, mm-hmm. th- um, this guy did some interesting stuff and I think it's mainly, it's, to me, if you do enjoy this movie, it's the strength of Keaton is what you're going to enjoy, I guess. But, you know, it's it's not surprising to me, too, that this movie really didn't get any nominations at all. No, it, it wasn't. On any level. It. it was just another sort of film yeah. that that, now, I, I, that dropped. That did just, again, like, you see the trailer for this and you go, oh, Oscar, well, here we go. Like, Keaton, it's true story. Go, you know, American icon, go. Now, and. I, yeah, yeah. I totally and then it, did, it, did, it didn't hit yeah. those things at all. Now, I will ask you this, though. Um, I know you're a vegetarian, but <laughs> at the beginning when... Uh, what Ray, does that have to do with yeah, anything, yeah, Chris? Yeah, yeah. Enough. Yeah. <laughs> when Ray Kroc was, like, visiting McDonald's for the first time, you saw the energy and, like, the newness of just, like, this big fast food restaurant. And everybody Didn't it kind of want you make you eat a cheeseburger? It made me want to go to Veggie Grill. Yeah. <laughs> this fast food vegetarian place that has popped up I in something. They're fucking great. So. <laughs> Deep and it fried. was uh, oh, it baked was chicken. So good. Uh, yeah, like at the beginning, I was like, I just, I kind of want a cheeseburger. And then towards the end of the movie, I'm like, I don't want to ever go to a McDonald's now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. And it, to me, I guess it also brought up the childhood. And I think every American kid has some sort of McDonald's. Oh, absolutely. T- oh, yeah. Story or aspect. My sister and my brother in law worked at McDonald's for years. My brother worked at McDonald's in high school, and he would come home smelling like burgers. He was a he was the burger guy. Mm-hmm. I remember when they came up with Sundays for the first time, and it was buy one get one free. And my brother right. and I were fighting over who got the free one and who got the paid one. <laughs> <laughs> That's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> And I like too the McDonald's as depicted in the film were built from scratch for the film because with the you know the way the old arches went and I remember <laughs> if you remember on um, Highland Avenue I think at either Sunset or Hollywood they used to have that Burger Man yeah there yeah they I think it's gone now mm-hmm. but they that was like the last old style yeah you know Mc, oh, McDonald's yeah. um, all right so let's now since uh, well, I want to go into this next movie because we've been talking a lot about there has been no real strong Oscar movies right. this year. Like, there has been no, like, 12 Years a Slave or Spotlight. No or Breakout. Some movie that you walked down and went, wow. From start to finish. Like, I remember watching Spotlight. I was riveted from start to Start finish. to finish. Yeah. 12 Years a Slave. I remember just being like, Jesus, yeah. that movie was so good. Every yeah. aspect of it was great. You weren't checking your watch. You weren't checking movies. your watch. And a lot of the movies we've talked about thus far in this Oscar race, you know, uh, Fences, Good performances, a little too, you know what I mean? Like Hidden right. Figures had good parts of it, but nothing that was like so knocked me out the whole time until last night I saw Lion. Okay. Now tell oh. us about, uh, uh, for people who don't know what this movie's about, tell it, give us an, uh, a little a summary. Um, so it's about, it's a true story about a kid that was- Oh, this is the Dev Patel movie. Yeah, this is the Dev Patel movie. Mm-hmm. Um, it's about a young kid in India who, they're, they're poor um, and- you know, so he's got an older brother who's like twelve who has to there he has to work. He the kid's like five. The mom picks up rocks. That's her job. <laughs> you know, like they have the movie opens with them stealing, jumping on a train and stealing coal and selling it for a couple bags of milk. Like the poverty in, in India is mm-hmm. is pretty severe. But to be clear, he doesn't go on a game show at the end. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he does not. And there's no d- dance number that yeah. breaks up. Um but so he gets separated from his brother. He, his brother's like, just wait here at this train station. I got to go work. I'll be back. The kid is five, gets up, doesn't know, wanders on a train. The train leaves and goes like 1,600 kilometers away. And he's separated. 
he's now in Calcutta. He's separated from his family. And this is, you know, it isn't like the way we grew up or your kids grow, your kids know your address, your phone number. He's just like, I'm from this town. And he's mispronouncing it because he's five and he's not, there's not a great education there, you know? So it's like, and now you're, he's just lost. So he gets adopted from an Australian family, which is played by Nicole Kidman. She does a, she does a fantastic job in it. And I'm going to bring up um, the uh, guy who plays her husband too. He's an Australian actor that does a pretty good job as well. Um, uh, Rooney Mara plays his girlfriend. So, so anyway, he, he, um, uh, David Wenham plays his dad. So he, he separated from his family and then eventually gets adopted by this Australian couple. And then the, there's, so then he's in Dev Patel is then an adult who's like, I have no identity. I'm, I'm Australian, but I'm in like, you know, so, so that's what the story is. And then his search to find, to go back home and find his parents. I cried throughout most of this movie. This wow. movie is stunning. And the only, there's like, this is me totally nit, nit, nitpicking because I've watched way too many movies. It's a little slow in the second act. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's it. But then it fucking <laughs> picks right back up. The first act is is a very graphic depiction of what life in India is like. I'll give you just a little quick <laughs> India. So in America, poverty is if you make whatever the number is, 13, 14, 15 grand a year, if you make less than that. Mm. So if you have a job and you make less than that, that's the poverty line. In India, it's you don't have um, food, uh, drinkable water. <laughs> that's the poverty line in India. And, and nowhere to live. And nowhere to live. 300 million people live that way. That's the population of the United States of America. So... You see this, they shot this, it, it's like, I mean, they must have shot this in Calcutta because it's like, it's, it's hard to watch. And 80,000 kids go missing every year in India. Wow, really? Because it's, when that kind of poverty, there's no way to track right. anyone. How do you, there's no nothing. Like, what if the entire population of America was living at that level of poverty? Like you wouldn't, how do we, they don't have access to the internet or a social security number. There's no IDs. It's like, it's insane. So, um, and I'm sorry, this little kid who plays young, who plays Dave Patel's as a boy, he should have got an Oscar nomination. He's as good as like the kid in room, the kid from beasts of no nation. Like he's, it says 4,000 boys auditioned to play Young wow. Saru. It was unbelievable. And this is a first-time director, Gareth uh, Davis. It's his first feature film. So, wow. And I got to say, it should so get... this one was a home run. It's the best picture. I'm looking at the list. Arrival, Fences, Hacksaw Ridge, Hell or High Water, Hidden Figures, La La Land, Lion, Manchester by the Sea, Moonlight. It's Lion. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you right now, it's Lion. I haven't seen Manchester by the Sea or Moonlight, but... Hell or High Water is very good, but nothing else comes close to this. And not nothing, in my opinion. It's that solid of a movie. And the director um, did amazing things with the shot composition and the sound design. Mm-hmm. Using sound design to help tell the story was so not this isn't done enough. So there's a scene where the kid wakes up on the train and is like where am I? And he tunes out all of the sound so that you feel the the kids scared, alone, from the view of a five-year-old boy, of like this daunting um, alone and, and just solitude. And I don't, where's my brother? And he keeps screaming his brother's name. It's just, it's just gut-wrenching. He does it with the sound and then a little sound picks up and then a little sound picks up. And then he's in Calcutta and then the mass sound of this giant city with this crazy train. Like, and these little things happen all the time. Then when Deb Patel is like, um, is, so he grows up, Nicole Kidman, and they raise him in Tasmania, which is an island in Australia. Her and Keith Urban raise him? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you were so into this. They, like you're so into the movie that you're like, wait, what? What? Huh? Wait, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, you're yeah. making a joke. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
oh, I'm really into this and you're doing a bit. Okay, okay, okay. Let me shift gears real quick. Um, yes, and. Um, <laughs> so they're in Tasmania. So then he gets this, he goes to, oh, I'm going to school up in Melbourne. So he goes up to Melbourne and that's where he's like, they're all hits re, re, where he meets Rooney Mara and um, they hang out with kids from class and there's some kids who are grew up in India and they're like, where are you from in India? He's like, I, I, I don't know. And they're just like, and so like these memories get triggered and he keeps kind of- Does he have an Australian accent? Yeah. And awesome. he worked really hard on it. Um, he's, he prepared for eight months to, to nice. get this Australian accent and just, he's, he's an Aussie. So he sounds like an Aussie and it's like, um, it was a really, it was a really fantastic story. Um, and like, I've known some people, like I, I had a friend living in Australia and she was adopted from Korea and she went back to Korea to find her family. And like, I know some people that were adopted under those circumstances and what it meant to them and how it, how conflicted they were. Um, and it's just, it's just a fantastic, and it's a true story. I mean, and there's just like, you know, and it's, it's gut wrenching and also beautiful in the same thing. And, and all the supporting cast are great, you know? Um, you know, the last three movies we talked about were true stories. I know that's Oscar bait. It's real mm-hmm. big Oscar bait, yep. but this one is, I mean, it happened in, you know, 1986 is when he was five year old, but he, he starts searching for his parents in like 2008, 2009. So it's, it's not a period piece really. Um, but it was really, it's, it's, oh, I can't wait to see it. It's now. fantastic. It's the best movie that I've kind of nervous to see it. I'm it's, gonna be, I'm going to be real upset. You're going to cry a lot unless well, you're dead inside. I um, cried uh, throughout hidden figures. Yeah. What did you think of that movie? I liked it. I mean, I, in comparison to what you're talking about, hidden figures, I was really engaged throughout the whole thing. I thought it was a really interesting story. Um, Pretty broad the way it was done. Pretty clean. Pretty stylized. Like everyone's outfits were perfect, and their hair was perfect, and the everything looked perfectly composed. Studio polish. Studio polish. Mm-hmm. Thank you, movie person. <laughs> <laughs> knows those things that I just took three sentences to describe. Um, but every time it was, you know, the colored line for this, or I started crying and I felt ashamed and mm-hmm. uncomfortable and that was, that's powerful that, mm-hmm. that, you know, that to see that story, I mean, it's not like Jackie at all, but how I was saying the hope for Jackie was like, Oh, tell me, tell me from this perspective and hidden figures had that where you're like, Whoa, mm-hmm. I knew this period of time, but I did not know that. And that's, that that was awesome. So yeah. that is, you know, you know, the story of them along with watching this, the space race told in that way. And I took my eight year old son and that was uh, really exciting, exciting, you know, just because did he things, like it. Yeah. He was engaged throughout the whole thing, but, uh, you know, little disconnects. Like there's a part where she has to run three quarters of a mile to go to the bathroom and, comes back and he you know uh kevin costner's finally like where are you going why are you not here when i need and and my son was like where is she going i'm like let she she's been going to the bathroom he's like oh (laughs) so there are things like that where i was you know i just lean over and say so you know russia's did that before he's like okay i got it (laughs) and then certain things like it was done pretty clever with the uh ship going around they showed it but they didn't really show it right. It was a, li- a bit savvy and then my son was like oh wait what it it's actually orbiting and i, and I said yeah and he's like, <laughs> oh okay um but that was cool to have him there for it and really moving story mm-hmm. and and hard to watch but inspiring yeah i i i I liked Hidden Figures as well. It's not hard to watch. It was enjoyable. It was hard to watch in terms of the... The reality the of the it. The reality of it. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, the one thing I... And I talked about it last week was just uh, sometimes when there's a, a little too studio polish, I almost like... That almost took me out of it at times. I think yeah. there was great performances in it and I did like... But sometimes this, I just felt like, is this really... Or is this the studio polished version? That's interesting. You know? it almost it's almost like a comforting a blanket of like, look, we're gonna hit all these notes of reality, but it's not gonna be too rough right. for you. It yeah. still is gonna be a nice uh right. blanket to carry this around. It's not gonna 
the bottom's not going to drop off. Right. <laughs> Where <laughs> lion, the bottom drops off. Like it's it's this is poverty in India. This is there's these are kids living on the street every day. Yeah. This is right now today, and this is what they're having to go through. The first act is the kid trying to f- survive, and it's brutal. It's not. And you're like, and the way they shoot it, and you can tell, to me at least, it looked like they just set up some cameras yeah, in, the, wow. in the distance and people just... I mean, for as much as I enjoyed Hidden Figures, you know, like, well, her speech is coming where she tells right. him off. Right. You know, she's something's going to happen. The that, big speech they're, like They're going to get their comeuppance. Like, that, they have to. That scene is the one where I was like, I have no doubt, and I talked about it on the show, I have no doubt she had to walk three quarters of a mile to go to the, the colored restroom. I have no doubt. But did she? Did it happen that way where she gave right. the big speech and then Kevin right, Costner? Right, 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 You right. know, like, did it really happen that right. way? If it did, great. I'm all for it. But it fe- this feels like Hollywood. Yeah, you're giving me the ver- the story. The big version, version. You know what I mean? Like the, the polished version versus did Kevin Costner say, well, I'll deal with it. In real life, did his character go, I don't know, and walk hot faster? Or did he say, oh, we're switching the bathrooms and it was it was fixed in a minute versus the big speech? I mean, and- that's one thing I did like about Moonlight. I, I know you guys have mm-hmm. talked about that before, but uh, mm-hmm. just uh, I had a, a friend of mine. She's really new. Mm. What did she say about Lala? I, she 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 said that Moonlight. Yeah, it was pretty slow. And it's that, that's such a discounting. <laughs> how gorgeous it is. It's like slow. You mean because it paid attention to the subtlety of the human heart? <laughs> that's slow to you. <laughs> I call that pretty beautiful and pretty groundbreaking. Um, Speed now- it up, sensitive Susie. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Come on. I got places to be. Um, I got business that need to buy other businesses. That's right. I got to crush my <laughs> that competitor. That was cool t- that it took its time in that mm-hmm. sense, uh, which maybe, you know, was ultimately not a good thing about it. But there but there were so many um, moments in that that you were like, ooh, this hurts. Like, he's just sitting there in this. So I know you haven't seen Lion, but of this best picture list thus far, of the ones you have you're, seen... You're selling me on Lion. I think I'm, I'm going to have a hard time watching it, but it sounds like it's got all the... Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, of the ones you have seen, what do you what would you oh, th- think um, thus far? I mean, I don't know. I really liked Hidden Figures. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. Is it Best Picture? Probably not. I guess uh, Hollywood's over being mad at Mel Gibson. Oh, boy. He's back. I, Arrival, I really dug. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's Best Picture, but I, Arrival, I thought, was really uh, intelligent, and it, it wasn't insulting, and that the use of suspense and the use of the mm-hmm. aliens, it wasn't... Um, mm-hmm. Since yeah, it, it, was, I, it was really well done. It, it was engaging. Uh, it was a bit more cerebral. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I'm really perplexed that Mel Gibson is on this list. I saw Hacksaw Ridge. It's decent. He did a lot with a low He's budget. The best director too. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. perplexing to oh. me. Oh, there's a lot of other directors out there. And uh, also, uh, the like actor guy, uh, the guy that directed Lion. I like uh, your attitude is basically like he should be done. Like, yeah. he, I don't want to. I don't want to. Well, hear from you know, him one anymore. thing for the pilot, it's tough for a first time director to get. The nom- a nomination for it's, which one are you referring to? Especially that. against an anti Semite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's two strikes against you. Yeah. <laughs> A heartwarming uh, story <laughs> that uh, puts up a website to help kids in India at the end of the movie while mm-hmm. you're, yeah, got it. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, best picture got something, which yeah, is good. It is, it is, and De- and Deb Patel got an uh, got a uh, supporting actor um, for it. All right, well, let's talk about our sponsor, and then we'll get into the uh, Academy Awards. Boom. Um, we want to talk about this is a uh, online web series called Guardian Pigeons by Avin Yap, and this is a uh, a fun series about uh, dueling pigeon conventions and two uh, two friends that were no longer friends, and then they become bitter rivals. Now, one of the things I I, I will give a suggestion that I would like to see for Guardian Pigeons is that um, they do some behind the scenes stuff with like the crew and mm-hmm. the cast, but I'd like to see one with the creator Avin Yap. And have him actually describe what attracted him to the story, why he wanted to tell the story, and how he kind of put it together. Mm-hmm. I'd be really interested in in seeing that behind the scenes. But it's a it's a really fun um, 
um, web series. There's only like six. Five episodes. Five episodes, yeah. They're each and five then, to seven minutes extras. each. Yeah. You know, it's like a total of about 30 minutes. It's a great, mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's a cool thing and it's it's something to check out. Like, as we've talked about, we like supporting independent yeah. artists. We like supporting um, and really do-it-yourselfers. It's exactly what you're watching. You're watching young talent, like filmmakers, cr- even uh, crew, actors, cut their teeth. That's really what you're watching. It's uh, you know, and it's 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 a great it's a great proving ground. So we just talked about you know, Lion is an Australian production. Uh, Dev Patel and Nicole uh, Kidman are famous, but yeah. it's a lot of other lesser known people. And I'm sure they all started. You know, everyone's starting doing stuff like this. That's right. why you should support it because some of these people in Guardian Pigeons might pop out of this, and you might Absolutely. see them elsewhere. And it's a great thing. That's why if you're a young filmmaker running around with a camera and shooting web series, you should absolutely be doing that. It's the best school you could go to because you get instant feedback. Experience is the best teacher. It's the best teacher. And it's the best, and this, you get instant feedback. Yes. (laughs) And and, and the other thing too, I like about when you're talking about line, like Nicole Kidman, you know, she doesn't have to, to uh, work with a first time director. No, that's like, it's, it's her Mm. choice to support this material and that director, which Mm -hmm. is great. And, you know, the more that, you know, the more established artists do that, to lift up the newer artists, it's always great to see. Yeah, and then the less we'll have to get nominations of Mel Gibson. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I hear sequel. Axel <laughs> reached the sequel. <laughs> this is his life back in the States after the war. <laughs> so check out Guardian Pigeons. It is on YouTube by uh, Avin Yap. And the thing you guys uh, subscribe to it and like it, those things you can do for free that help yes. support web series. Mm-hmm. In fact, a couple people were uh, uh, tweeting like, what was the name of that one again? Yeah. And, uh, uh, so a bunch of people already subscribed, which is great. Uh, mm-hmm. Thanks, guys, for also not only supporting us, but also other artists. Um, so we want to go talked right a little to bit, uh, Well, Academy we talked a little Awards. bit about the Academy Awards. Yes. We talked about the best pictures. Were there anything on this list that really jumped out at you as – how did this make it? Or I'm so glad this was sort of, cause here's like, like I, I look at hell or high water, which is an excellent film. I yes. think it's the reason it didn't it. So it got Jeff Bridges gets best, um, supporting, um, for hell or high water. And you know, that's like about it. And I think Chris Pine and, um, and Ben Foster kind of got, the rest of that movie kind of got shunned a little bit. I think it might have suffered from re- getting a release date in the summer versus they didn't do a big Could push be. in like Could November, be. December. Mm-hmm. Um, but some of these other things, you know, uh, Viola Davis, I, and I said it when I saw Fancy, she, she deserves a nomination. She gets one, which is great. She's a fantastic actress. Octavia Spencer gets one as well. Um, I will say Arrival surprised me a little bit on Best Picture. I mean, I know you guys liked the movie more than I did, but I didn't hate it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, even like what... Uh, Mary Lynn had said, you know, I liked it, but I don't know if it's best picture. It, it just feels like uh, it was, when you look at everything in general, it feels like it was a little weaker of an Oscar year this year, just overall. Overall, I think yeah. there isn't, there isn't like four or five movies. Like standouts, like, oh, I don't know how any of these right. could beat this other one. Yeah. It's, it's just sort of, they were all decent. decent. Do you like Manchester by the Sea? <laughs> I did like Manchester by the Sea, but I had picture? problems with it too. I mean, it I could see being nominated, but it was, you know, it was slow and set up like a play and there was a lot of really kind of dead air in time and it did not stick the landing for sure. Um What did you think of it? I didn't see it. Oh. But do you um, want to know? I will. That's one of those ones as parents, uh you have a certain amount of time at night and I'm trying to get my husband, I'm like he's like, "Oh, it's just you're at the end of your day, and it's like I can't watch that right now. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's going to be sad and heavy. Yes, and it's sad that I just admitted that. But there yeah. you have it. Don't feel shame. I've no, I've been I, I, uh, I get going that through. Completely. There's certain movies, especially on the list, especially in the documentary category. You got to be in the right mood. To Sometimes stop watching. Um, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people did the, the Walking Dead at a certain point. We're like, I. I, I can't don't do want to end my evening like this. We're yeah. really into it for a few seasons, and it's like mm-hmm. I don't, I don't have the energy to watch this endless hacking open of bodies. <laughs> I know. I yeah. as watching, I wind down my day. I know. Yeah. Not gonna I started watching Old Thirty Rock. I'm going through know. the whole series, and I, that's how I end my day. A little twenty two minutes. I'm nihilistic enough to still enjoy Walking Dead. No oh my how. gosh! <laughs> I can't do it. it. I dropped off at the yeah. Negan. Because uh, yeah, I was just still, like, still what's on board? I dropped off like season three. I'm like mm-hmm. every episode. Oh my God, let's just make it out. No, the world's over. Just, yeah, just, you know, just hang yourself. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> like, <laughs> 
So now if you look at actor in a leading role, Casey Affleck, I thought, did a really good job. I haven't seen Hacksaw Ridge yet. Andrew Garfield does a decent job, but uh-huh. I, I, I – he he doesn't he does a decent job. I just there's a there's other act. I mean, like honestly, I would put the kid, the kid from Lion in his spot right. mm-hmm. as what I would do because the kid is powerful. He's a powerful young actor, and yeah. so well. I mean, also too, you got like Ryan Gosling. It was a good performance, but it was a lighter performance than some of these. Well, other the, ones. yeah, the, I don't know that. But that shouldn't – a good performance is a good performance. Just because um, the movie tone is light doesn't mm. mean. That, that well, it, that I agree with. When I say a lighter performance, I mean like there was, there there wasn't a ton to it. Like like it was it, like it wasn't. It's uh, not life or death. Yeah, it, it felt like uh, I don't know. I mean, I see what you're saying, but also I feel like there was Ryan Gosling was still kind of playing Ryan Gosling in mm-hmm. the movie. I mean, I really like La La Land, but I didn't feel like like I feel like actor in a leading role is a performance that uh, blows you away from start to finish where you see something from a, an actor mm-hmm. or performance that you just like you you can't forget like like the performance like uh mark ruffalo in spotlight or something right. like that when you see like you're just riveted mm-hmm. and uh, and it stays with you after the film che- um cheeto uh, cheat away at Ed- edifor i can't ever pronounce his Chiwetel name Ed- Geofer. yes yes in 12 years a slave like <laughs> yes, his performance like, like was... you, after you're out of the movie theater you're like wow you know you still it stays with mm-hmm. you like like mm-hmm. that now, I'm not saying it can't be a comedy or light or fun, but it's like, I feel like for a best performance, it, it stays with you a little more. Right. Now, Viggo Mortensen for Captain Fantastic, I didn't love this film, but he did a good job in it, which is interesting. Like, we were talking about the pattern here. It's like, do you see Captain Fantastic in any other category? No. No. Uh-uh. So, it, it feels like we have a lot of piece test? films. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see it on here? Yeah. D- identify the other Look category. Again. Yeah. <laughs> So we have a lot of just kind of compartmentalized movies where this movie did this great, but not this. This mm. movie did this great, but not this. So, well, yeah. yeah. The, I mean, Jackie. I mean, you know, a lot of them, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. We, so, we're going to do a whole episode yeah, talking I do. about The ones I do want to mention, though, is the um, animated films. Because this, I find, is actually a really strong category. Kubo and the Two Strings is amazing. I hope it wins. Moana was really good. Um, Zootopia was really good. My Life is a Zucchini, I haven't seen, and I've never heard of it until today. <laughs> I, um, I saw a trailer for it ahead of Lion. It's a foreign, it's a French film, and it looks really powerful. It's about a kid who's like, mother goes away, and he has to go to like an orphanage or something, and it's 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 really interesting. What medium is it? Is it like... Uh, I think it's, it looks almost like claymation computer? to me. Oh, claymation. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. And now the Red Turtle, this is a, um, that I just uh, learned about this one as well, a co-production between Studio Ghibli and uh, another studio. And it's supposed to be this beautiful film that's like a non-dialogue animated, like, uh, castaway kind of movie. Oh. And, uh, but again, it's these movies, some of these animated features are so hard to find before Oscar season. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping they make um, some of these a little more available. So, like, Red Turtle and My Life is... Yeah, I'd like to see both of them. Yeah. But, you know, the other films are all solid. Like, there's no good dinosaur in that list. You know, they're, (laughs) they're, they're, they're very solid. Do you see a lot of these animated movies because of your son, Marilyn? Um, or, or do you see a lot of anime movies in general? Like, yeah, but I, I don't really enjoy animated movies very much. So you just drop your kid off and go. <laughs> I try to. Yeah. <laughs> I just zone out. I was really excited when he got to go to Hidden Fences with me. I was like, yes, nice. It's ladies' time. Hidden figures, you know, because mm. the women's march. I was marching against animated films. <laughs> <laughs> As a mom, they should these kids should see more live. Revealed action. the lameness of myself. <laughs> and I'm sorry. Like how I was gonna pick my uh, Oscar winner, just not even having seen the film. I'm like, yeah, I'm going for a lion, just based on what you said. Yeah. <laughs> well, you might be right. <laughs> from what I dart board, some shots, some yeah. choices. <laughs> I like it. Um, all right, well, let's get into uh, trailers. Yes. And guys, you, like we do every year, we'll do a whole Oscar preview, like the, probably that will drop the week before the Oscars, yes. and we'll do a whole thing. We'll have to call Doug. We'll have to get Doug Benson yeah. in here. This is a yearly visit. Um, so Logan, I saw this, uh, loved this trailer. Love Cannot trailer. wait to see this movie. Um, it's, I was like, well, what else are they going to do with Wolverine? Oh, this. Okay, I'm on board. 
Yeah. I can't I can't wait to see this movie. And I, isn't it uh Hugh Jackman's last turn as Wolverine? But you know, you don't I, I don't buy that you, at all. You, you hear yeah. that like, well, it's like when Stephen King writes his last book. You know, I'm like he might be He's back. gonna come back. Yeah, yeah. He's um, not gonna be done with Logan. He's gonna so, I'm like old man Logan. There's still there's all sorts of story arcs for He's, old man Logan. Oh, <laughs> so how does he play bocce Young ball? Wolverine's coming up. <laughs> yeah, those kids are going to grow up. Little wo- yeah, there's time travel. There's it's comic books. It could be any. Little Wolverine goes yeah. to college, yep. and he's got to come to parent. Explain how he looks older. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Power Rangers. Now, did you see this trailer? No. Uh, this trailer. It, it's funny. I'm watching it um, with my kids, and it's literally. It's like catnip for eight-year-old boys. It's, you know, teenagers getting superpowers, you know, getting costumes, fighting monsters, and then getting bigger and fighting giant monsters and all this, you know, then, you know, like uh, like these giant mechs that they get in and fight in those and, you know, dinosaur-shaped machines and all sorts of really, really stuff where you just see, like, um, the eight-year-old boy's eyes get larger and larger. Although even my 11-year-old daughter was like, you know what? It looks okay. Mm-hmm. I think I might go and want to go see it, Are you going to take your son to so. Ireland? I will. Yes. I'll enjoy it. Well, you like it. Yeah, I'll just do a bunch of drugs before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are your typical pre-movie drugs when you go to a kid's film? I just do a little bit of acid, just a hint. Good. Yeah. Good <laughs> for you. Of Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> so it evens out. And then you yeah. get popcorn. Uh, you just spread the yeah. cheese mm-hmm. for salt on it. Yeah. It's so, reasonable, respectable. So I will be seeing, uh, I will be seeing Power Rangers for sure, uh, as I'm sure you will. I will. Uh, now, um, have fun. I, I'm very thankful that uh, my kids have started to slowly forget about monster trucks, so I may not have to see that one, mm. which is good. You're off the hook. Yeah. My kid does want to see the... Uh, um, Batman Lego movie, really? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Why he's just not a? No, he does want. Oh, he does want to see it. Oh, okay. That looks fun. I mean, I'm Batman see. and Legos. Yes, yeah. I'm gonna know, see that again. It's like it's any <laughs> small boy. I'm like, yes, you know, just I to just tell me, just say Lego and Batman together. They're there. You sold. So, yeah. Make a poster. Yep. You have a movie. <laughs> So, okay, and coming out on DVD and Blu-ray, um, Inferno, ooh, yes. I know you're excited to see the yes. Ron Howard Da Vinci Code uh, trilogy. Yeah. Mm. I wonder what happens. I actually read the book, too. That's how much of a masochist I was on that one. I am so excited to watch this on a plane. This is going to yeah. get me through a flight, and it's going to be fantastic. Yeah, it's going to be just the perfect amount to keep you engaged to get through It will flight. be on a plane, for sure. For sure. And you'll go, oh, all right. Mm-hmm. Sleep on and off. Yeah, sleep right. on and wake up. Oh, did they catch the demon guy or whatever? Yeah. All right, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> they find the old scrolls. They figured it out. All right. And uh, The Light Between the Oceans is the next movie. And this is the Michael Fassbender Lighthouse movie. <laughs> They've been pushing this release date back yeah, a couple of times. I, so is, I, that like, makes me scared. It, it's, it's like it's already on DVD. I'm like, wait, when did it come out? I remember, didn't it get moved or something mm. weird was happening with this movie? And it was where, you know, is they... that the big sweeping romantic? Yeah. And then, well, it's like he comes back from World War One. He oh, lives right. in the lighthouse. And then a, a baby shows up on the door right. and they raise it. Then they go back to the mainland. Someone's missing a baby. What are they going to do? What happened to that? Mm. Yeah, I went to DVD. That's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> There's another couple movies. I'm Not Ashamed. And this is a, looks like a very, um, I won't say it's a happy movie. It's it's uh, based on a true story of someone that was killed in the Columbine Massacre. Oh, so wow. they went through all of her um, um, kind of like notes and researched her and uh, basically made a movie about her. Wow. So it's going to be talk about being crying through a fair amount of this film. Uh, it's called I'm Not Ashamed. And the next one is The Handmaiden. This is, I believe, a, um, a thriller, a period thriller. And I think it's Korean, I believe. Hmm. So you can check that out. Um, and The Monster, which is a, a low-budget horror movie about a mother and daughter who don't get along but get stranded on the road and chased by a monster <laughs> sweet so uh so that sounds like that would help a mom yes. don't yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe it does maybe, maybe that's the point problems aren't we'll so see. bad yeah. or maybe the mom's like oh throws her to the monster yeah. <laughs> enough of wait to see what happens that'd be a good twist <laughs> <laughs> so 
And the site spotlight, you have to read Neil's review of Triple X, The Return of Xander Cage. Yes, he's back. Yes. Oh, thank oh, God. Fine. The return. The return of Xander Cage. I'm so glad. Too Xander, too cagey. Oh. <laughs> this literally, these they've now made these Triple X movies more like Fast and Furious. Of course. Of course. <laughs> they literally made a Fast and Furious movie, you know, you know with just him in a, a different coat. No, it's not even that. He just has tattoos, I think. Right? It's the same tank top <laughs> yeah. and the same... Uh, yeah, we were talking about They probably shot him at the same time. <laughs> yeah. um, so premiering this week is um, Gold. This is the Matthew McConaughey. Film. I keep seeing trailers for this, and I'm curious... This could go either way. Was this trying to be an Oscar movie, and it didn't mm. hold, so they made it, gave it this January release? I don't know. It looks like it should be interesting. It's him yeah. all crazy outfit, looking ugly, like accents and beards and haircuts or whatever. Right? <laughs> like, <laughs> what's he doing? He buys gold? Oh, he, he finds go- a gold finds mine. Go- oh, he finds a gold mine. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, you know, everyone what comes year? after him. They all want a piece. It's piece in the 80s. Mine. It's based on a, on a true story. So I don't know. Uh, and the next movie is Resident Evil, the final chapter. You know, of course, we'll see. Uh, but I... I've played these games. I have a guilty pleasure on these movies. I will be going to see this movie. I have my Umbrella Corporation umbrella if it's raining. <laughs> <laughs> so I will be going to see this oh, movie. Oh, <laughs> nerd, 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 nerd. Um, and then, uh, oh, I want to read this fan feedback real quick before oh, sure, we talk about ahead. the next two movies. Um, so we posted uh, Star Wars The Last Jedi um, is in theaters December 27th, and we, we, we posted that. Um, and Kurt, uh, Armbruster posted, greetings, Jedi Starfighter. You have been recruited by the resistance to defend the frontier against the first order of the Kylo Ren Armada. (laughs) That's a first Starfighter mashup. That's what you're calling it. I like that. That was very funny. (laughs) Very funny. Nice nerd references. Um, I like the last Starfighter. All right. Dog's Purpose. Dog's Purpose. A lot of controversy on this one. Oh, boy. You see the trailer and you go, oh, neat. And then you see the how they shot it and they're torturing these dogs and you're like pushing Damn. them in the water, which dogs hate. It sounds awful. Like, yeah. I don't want to see this movie. Well, like, this is bad. I now, don't want to. No one should see this. There has been a lot of pushback on that where the TMZ falsely edited the video and there's a lot oh, of God. like responses where all the, uh, you know, the handlers on set is like, that's not what happened. And then they go into this long explanation. Although the producer, Gavin Pallone, said, yeah, there was some stuff happening on the set that, you know, I wasn't happy with. And uh, way so, to step up and so, do nothing, know, Gavin. Right? So so here here's the thing. Here's the we're never gonna know exactly what happened. You've got a tape that was possibly doctored. You've got all these people coming out against the movie. You've got also the people saying, well no, the movie's about animal rescue and it's all this stuff. So uh, clearly something happened. <laughs> well you if know, the producer that happened yeah, with the yeah, yeah, horses yeah, uh, right, the movie was right. that where if they if the producer said he there's some stuff happened that he didn't yeah, like, they, that's kind of an and there's some footage that's sort of enough. Yeah, there, there there's something for me. something happened there. Now whether it was doctored to make it much more horrible than it actually was, who who knows? Uh but it's also the kind of thing too but where all of it is true. Yeah, yeah. It, it was doctored and there were some It can be it doesn't yeah, have to yeah, be either it, or exactly. It yeah, be it was, both. Uh, most likely it was both. <laughs> Uh, so and like kind of abusing a dog doesn't make it okay, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it, it's uh, the videos made it worse, but we just kind of did it. Oh, yeah. Oh, then all and, right. And, you know, there, there's uh, there's all this walk back and and like rationalization of like we picked this dog because it loved water and it didn't like where it was jumping in, and that's when we moved it back. That's really what you're saying. And I'm like, oh my god. And okay. but here here's the thing. Hollywood has been using animals for many, many years, and there's all these safeguards in place. They're supposed to be, uh, you know, someone right. viewing this all the time. For this to happen, you know, this someone really fucking dropped the ball. For this to even, th- this never should happen with all the safeguards in place mm-hmm. on set. Never should happen, even if it was uh, not as bad as the video portrayed. Right, but and also. Clearly, something was happening because the studio pulled the movie for like a week, yeah. Too, so there was there was you know where there's smoke, there's fire. Something happened, for sure. Now the movie is out this week. I don't expect big things from the box office from nope. it. Um, 
So, and IMDb people are weighing into all over the movie, like, give it a chance, don't believe Pete. <laughs> and then they're saying, oh uh, the video was horrifying, I can't support this movie. It's like all over the place to the point where apparently IMDb was also starting to pull reviews that weren't reviewing the movie. They were just talking about how horrible the video was. So, mm-hmm. um, judge for yourself. <laughs> so, or don't go. Uh, or, yeah, <laughs> vote with your dollars. Yeah. <laughs> it's very easy to not go to this movie. <laughs> um, all right, last movie, Kung Fu Yoga. Kung Fu Yoga. I'm this in. Is the, Two uh, things I like. Yeah. <laughs> and Jackie Chan. <laughs> to Kung Fu so, and Yoga. Yeah. And if you watch the trailer for this film, it literally, you have no idea what's going on in this movie. It's like, it's, it's really? Kung Fu. It's also, um, there's they go to India, so that's where the yoga comes from. But also, they do this weird thing where they're, it's subtitled, but... A lot of it is in English, but their accents are so bad, you feel, well, they don't know English. They're just being forced to say the words, even though they don't understand what it is, what they're saying. And then some of it isn't in English, but they, they fit, I, I guess the subtitlers, this guy, you know what? Just put it through the whole thing, even I'm if in. a lot of it's in English. Um, Forget dog's purpose. So, it's yeah. all about Kung Fu. It's all about Kung Fu <laughs> yoga. <laughs> We're yeah. in. Yeah. No yoga was harmed in the making. Oh, okay, good. It <laughs> was all real downward yeah. dogs. Yeah, they weren't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you see it? I tied it in, guys. I took both the things we were talking about. Um, well, that's our show, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. No yoga was Thanks for in having me. Pool. I missed you guys. Uh, yeah, thanks we're for coming so back. great to see you. Where can people find you? Where, on the internet, shows you're doing? What do you got going on? Uh, I'm going to be doing at midnight soon, and I did that the comedy jam. Have you heard about that? Mm-mm, no. It's um, comedians telling stories and then singing a rock song. It's going to be crazy. Nice. Comedy Central, yeah. Sweet. I sing Creep by Radiohead. Spoiler. Awesome. Super fun, and there's some people doing some cra- and some crazy guests, but that's a new show. Oh, that's awesome. And then locally in Los Angeles, they'll be at your, your, your comedy club near you. And the Los Angeles <laughs> Podcast Festival. Yes. <laughs> Later in With the year. you guys, hopefully yes. at 11 or 12 that night. Yes. <laughs> when you like to... I want to do as many podcasts yeah. as I can in a row. Where can people find yeah. you online? Can they talk oh, to you on oh, the Oh, at uh, Mary Lynn Rice Cub on Twitter. Nice. Right? Yeah. Let's talk about everything. Let's do it. Follow her, guys. What do you We're... got coming up? What uh, other, uh, Any other shows or anything coming up? Uh, I had a show on Amazon that... Did, that they kept us waiting for a year for the pickup, picked up for five, and then they told us we're not going to do it. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, so mm-hmm. that's happening. That yeah. <laughs> cool. So I'm available. Okay. I'm available. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that's our show. Um, Can I give you guys a couple headshots? Yeah, okay, that's cool. we're Thanks. we're hiring. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, <Yeah>. Your eyebrows. <laughs> yep. <laughs> There's room in the garage for one more. Yeah, we're going to build you a Ford out of shirts. Um, uh, guys, the Earbuds documentary, the DVD is done. It's for sale. Autograph yes. copies from Chris and myself. There's a whole mm-hmm. spot in there to get autographs from other people. And so go buy to, them for gifts, buy them for yourself. Yes, comedyfilmnerds.com. Um, and of course, it's available digitally as well. As well. Um, so that's our show. Thank you, Marilyn Rice Cub. Thank you. I'm Graham Elwood. And I'm Chris Mancini. And as always, remember, Han shot first. first.